what a joy, what a joy it is to worship you. What a joy it is to lift our voices to the King. What a joy it is to honor you. What a joy it is to declare your goodness. Oh, to thank you for all you've done. Oh, our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house. Your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. Oh, we give you all the glory, Lord. Oh, sing our praise, our praise becomes your house, your place, our praise becomes. Your house, your place, our praise, our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. Oh, we give you glory, Lord. We'll sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise and you come in. Sing a song and you come in, make a dance and you come in, shout your name and you come in, give you praise. Oh, you inhabit the praise of your people. Oh, you inhabit the praise of your people. Oh, yes, you do. You inhabit the praise of your people. Sing our praise, our praise become your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise, our praise become your house, your place, oh God. Oh, we worship our Lord. Oh, we'll sing a song, we'll sing a song, and you come in, make a dance, and you come in, shout your name, and you come in, give you praise, and you come in, sing a song, and you come in, make a dance, and you come in, shout your name, and you come in, give you praise, for you in high, the praise is of your people. Oh, yes, you the praise is of your people. Oh, we thank you, Lord, you we have the praise is of your people. Oh, you We'll sing a song, we'll sing a song, and you come in, make a dance, and you come in, shout your name, and you come in, give you praise, and you come in, sing a song, and you come in, make a dance, and you come in, shout your name, and you come in, give you, we'll sing a song, we'll sing a song, and you come in, make a dance, and you come in, shout your name, oh, we give you praise, we'll sing a song, come on, church. Shout your name, give you praise. We'll sing a song, we'll sing a song, and you come. Make a dance, and you come in. Shout your name, and you come in. Give you praise. We'll sing a song, to you. Make a dance, and you come in. Shout your name, and you come in. Give you praise. For you we have the praise of your people. The praise is of your people. Oh, we thank you, Lord. You inhabit the praise. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. You inhabit the praise. 
Come flood this space, my God. No one else could take your place. Have your way, oh Lord. No one else. Sing it again. Come flood this space. Come flood this space, my Lord. No one else could take your place.
and our hands and our voices. Come on, make some, worship him a little bit tonight. Father, we glorify you and we bless you and we honor you. Our heart is to see your glory come, to see your glory fall. Oh, Father, we thank you. That is what the world needs to see, is the glory of God manifest through the church. Thank you, Father, that as these days grow closer to your return, and we thank you, Father, that your church rises up in full strength and the glory of God will be seen upon us, like Isaiah 60 says, and the glory of God will be seen through us and kings shall come to the brightness of our rising. We thank you, Jesus. What an honor to live in such a time. What an honor to be a part of a generation that since Adam, the only generation that will never close their eyes to sleep the sleep of death Lord what a what a thought that out of all the generations before us we're the only ones that will never see death that will be changed in the twinkling of an eye that will ascend and meet Jesus in the clouds and be raptured Lord what a privilege that you saw throughout the eons of time that you called us to be a part of the church age, that you called us to be a part of the very last minute of the church age. Lord, it is a privilege to walk this earth, even in amongst this darkness, but to, to have dominion and to occupy until you come. You said you're looking for faith when you come back on the earth. Lord, you're gonna find us because we've got it, praise God. We thank you, Father. What a privilege to learn about it. What a privilege to meditate upon these things. Lord, these things propel us, they are jet, propulsion fuel that pushes us forward in our walk with God when we realize just how fleeting this world is and how short the time is and we don't know exactly how long but we know that we're in the end of the end of the end and we know you're coming soon and it, and it motivates us to live for you more and do more for you in this season so we thank you we thank you for this wonderful minister this man of God this prophet of God and he does stand in that office Lord, we put a draw and a demand on that flow and that anointing and that office in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, not just for the teaching flow, but for the prophetic flow as well. We thank you for the gifts of the Holy Gift, the Holy Ghost, the revelation gifts, and the power gifts to operate and the utterance gifts. And we thank you. We just commit the service to you, Holy Ghost, whatever is in your heart, whatever is the highest flow, that is what we desire to flow in and walk in. And we thank you that you'll, that, that, that Brother Joe will, will take his liberty. Lord, as Paul said in Ephesians 6, that he would speak boldly as he ought to speak and that he would have utterance, doors of utterance would be open to him, that he would speak forth as the Holy Ghost would have him speak on whatever the area and he'd just flow with the Spirit. And Lord, we're hungry to receive in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone that agreed with that said, Amen. 
turn around and tell somebody you love them and greet them real quick, real brief, just a quick God bless you, a quick hug, a quick nice to see you. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. It's good to have you all here. Thank you for coming. Part two out of four on the end times. I think he's focusing on the rapture, or that's what he said, but he can fo focus on whatever he wants. And uh, we learned this morning who the Antichrist is, the president of France, and so praise God. <laughs> who knows? Very well likely could be. Who knows? We don't know. We also learned that I'm wrong and Jesus is not coming in 2034. He's coming in 2026. But then again, I'm not convinced about that. So Joe and I will have to have varying opinions. But uh, listen, my opinion is just come as quickly as you can, Lord. I want to get out of here. You remember the Bible says that, uh, that Lot was vexed with the conversation of the unrighteous. It vexed his righteous soul, the Bible says, day by day. It says that in Hebrews. And uh, honestly, with what hap what's happening in our society, if you're not vexed, Day by day, something's wrong with you. you. You don't have a righteous soul if you just think everything's wonderful that you see on the news and you just celebrate everything you see our prime minister do. It vexes my righteous soul day by day. It does. So I want to get out. So brother, I hope you're wrong. I hope he comes in 2023. That would be this year, about eight months from now. So I'm, I'm ready. I don't care. I don't need the airplane, airline pilot thingy, whatever. I don't need nothing. I just, I'm on my way out. But where, whatever it is, we're going to be ready, and it motivates us to, to run faster. Like he said, at the end of the game, everybody is more focused. Everybody is more intense. Uh, the margin for error is much lower at the end of that, uh, M, you know, that, uh, that, what's that big football thing again? What's it called? The Super Bowl. As you can see, I don't watch. <laughs> anyway, uh, but I'm sure that, that, that that's an intense time, isn't it? Praise God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. Brother Joe, thank you for coming all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma. And you have stuff on your, out there. Like you have your book. Did you bring other stuff, T-shirts and stuff as well? They can order it. He's got some really cool stuff on his website, some different T-shirts that, that are really neat. So you need to go on his site. Can we make sure, if we don't have it this service, have it for Monday, for, to Monday, for tomorrow morning. Let's make sure that his website is on our screen, that we can put that up so people can go on. But the book is out there. Lorraine, do we have any left? We do have some left, so, the, so you'll talk a bit about that tonight. Okay, come on up, brother. Why don't you stand up and welcome our guest tonight, Reverend Joe Morris. God bless you, sir. Love you. Bless you, love you too. Thank you. Good to be with you. Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. You can be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. You can sit down. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming on Saturday night, man. Saturday morning, then Saturday night. This is the real deal. Come on. You know, if you hunger and thirst, you'll be filled. So he's watching over his word to perform it. So he'll, he'll watch over that word tonight to strengthen you. And I probably didn't say it enough this morning. All this information is not just to get info. It's because he loves you. Amen. He wants you happy. He wants you hopeful. He wants you blessed. Amen. You know, I'm the most excited when I see my daughter blessed. You know what I mean? I live. It kind of freaked Colleen out when she saw how I function with my daughter. Like, man, you're, you're the weirdest dad I've ever seen. I focus on blessing my little girl. And, uh, and if I think like that, how much more our Heavenly Father? Come on. <laughs> We all get that from him, but he, he, he loves you, wants you strengthened. He doesn't want you uh, moved by anything, nothing concerning you, zero fear. I mean, I, I talk to some people and they're just so all afraid, word people, afraid of everything. I'm like, there, there is no fear, there's nothing. Perfect love casts out fear. When you realize how much he loves you, and, it, and the Lord really hammers me on that as you get into all of it. He goes, tell him again, tell him again. I think, Lord, I've told him 17, 18 times, and that's how much he wants us to grasp that that he's really, really looking forward to seeing you. It's not like, oh, here we go. The church is going to come up and we're going to have another phase of whatever this time is on the earth. No. No, no, no. He, he, he loves it so much that he let himself be beaten, yeah. tortured. I mean, not just killed, but, man, killed in a horrific manner so that you don't have to have disease. Yeah. <laughs> you can have peace of mind. I mean, he was mentally chastised or tormented so we don't have to be tormented. Come on. And I have no fear of death because I have eternal life in me everywhere I go. Come on, I have zero fear. I mean, it's, my biggest concern is I don't have a concern. <laughs> Amen. Well, the Word gets in you. The Word produces that. The incorruptible seed, it produces a strength in you. And you know, just to, before we get into what we'll get into tonight, I didn't talk about it this morning, but uh, since preaching on end times so much, I've seen more miracles preaching on end times than when I preached on miracles. I mean, absolutely crazy. I'll give you a couple examples. Uh, I was in Alma, Arkansas, a really wild church in Arkansas. And uh, 
the time before when I was there, tons of miracles. I had a word of knowledge that someone can't feel the bottom of their lip. It said, you're healed. This woman came down at the end of the service, and she goes, man, this is the wildest thing I've ever seen. I can feel my bottom of my lip now. She'd had surgery, and she goes, uh, uh, and I was sitting, standing there talking to her. I, really, I didn't think she was saved. I go, are you born again? She goes, what's born again? She wasn't even saved. Got saved right there after getting healed. One lady got her knee replaced right there while, while the service was going. This last time when I was there a few months ago, uh, I had some words of knowledge for service, and I called them out and just said, you're healed because of time. I don't call people down hardly anymore because I've got too long. I preach too long. And uh, I had a word that someone, uh, uh, that night, someone had had a bomb, not bomb, but like an explosion went off on the side of their head. Well, I didn't know there was a kid there about 18 or 19, and he had said about me first service, he's a con man, he's a con man. And this is, all, this is what he said, it's all BS. Well, they got him to come back that night, and he'd had this Tannerite blow up by his ear. He said, when I called that out, that something got sucked out of his ear, got his hearing back right there. Wow. Calling me a con man, calling it BS, he yeah. gets his hearing back right there. Sort of, he's, he's crying like a baby in front of the whole church. I mean, he's just broken down because the, the goodness of God led him to repentance. That's Amen. Right. I can tell you story after story. I'll, I'll give you another one. This one's crazy. Mattoon, Illinois last year. Uh, Ed and Mary Nell Stevens are the pastors, just so you can see how this is, this is real. I had a word of knowledge that somebody had a metal plate in their head. And I said, you're healed. I don't know what the deal is. It's called a word, not a paragraph. Didn't even think about it. And so after the service, this lady came walking up. You know how sometimes you kind of stand there with the pastor and you talk for a minute in the front? This lady came walking up. She goes, she goes hey, I have a loose screw. I said, excuse me? <laughs> That's what she said to me. She didn't say hi. didn't say hello. She goes, I got a loose screw. And I go, well, we all got a loose screw, but you know, tell me something we don't know, you know. She goes, no, no, I have a loose screw. She goes, I have a metal plate in my head, and I had a screw loose. I said, how do you know it's loose? She goes, I can shake my head. I can feel it. They wanted to go back in and open this flap up and tighten the bolt down. She said, when I called that out, she felt that screw tighten up in her head. Wow. The Lord will even tighten your bolts in your head if you got bolts in your head. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, absolutely crazy. I'll give you another one. This was from Columbia, South Carolina. I was just there literally three weeks ago. I had some words of knowledge that someone was in a car wreck and they'd hurt their back and their neck. I said, you're healed. And there's someone here. You got damage on the inside of your nose. I said, like something got severed. And uh, I called it all out. And at the end of the service, this big guy came walking down. He's probably six foot eight, six foot nine, just huge. He goes, hey, can I say something? I'm like, man, this is a mistake, but okay. What do you, what do you want to say? He goes, hey, I don't, <laughs> it's cute. He goes, I don't know you. Like he was mad at me. He goes, I don't know you, but my back's healed, my shoulder's healed. And my wife just had brain surgery, and they went up through the inside of her nose to get to the base of her brain, but they severed the inside of her nose. She wasn't in the service. When I called that out, she texted him and said, I got my breathing back in my nose. God's so good, you don't have to be in the service. I mean, is that crazy? Not even in the building. I'll give you one more. Chris Romine's church in Corbin, Kentucky. I had a word of knowledge that someone had palsy. It was probably one of the first times I've ever had a word palsy. I said, well, you're healed. There was a woman there that was sitting next to the youth pastor's mom, and this woman sitting by her, the glory of God came on her, and it got on all, everybody all around. Everybody was kind of going, oh, my, what in the world? Well, she got healed of palsy. It so freaked her out. Uh, she went home at 1230 at night and called her Baptist pastor, and she said, I know Jesus doesn't heal anymore, but I got healed of palsy tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, don't tell anybody. I still think he's healing people too. Come on, amen. Oh, wow. so, so the Lord's so good. He reaches out to all these people and, and loves on them and blesses them. And uh, that's preaching on the coming of the Lord, not a word about miracles. And he's just kind and good. So grab your Bibles there. Uh, I won't ramble. I think I felt like I rambled all morning this morning. So I will try not to ramble. And uh, it, I did tell P Pastor Craig that we'll be in Aramaic tonight. So just get ready. <laughs> No, we'll have fun. We'll, we'll pick up where we left off. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for everyone that came tonight. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for your destiny for their lives. I thank you for their households filled with great peace and great joy. That, Lord, they would look to you, the author and the finisher of, of all of our faith, so that we would finish our course strong with joy, great joy. We thank you for it. We thank you for everyone's children are, are, are obedient, doing the will of God. We thank you their disciples taught of you, Lord. Great is their peace and unsure composure. We thank you for an awakening even in all of our souls to pick up the pace, to pick up a, a different assignments that were left aside years ago that through hurt or damage or trials we laid them aside. Lord, we'll, we'll pick up those things and we'll walk in them. All those different anointings that we saw over the years, Lord, we thank you for helping us cooperate with you so that we can harvest in your style. People can see that Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus, 
Jesus, we magnify you. Jesus, we honor you. Receive the honor and glory. Do your name tonight, Lord. We, we love you. We honor you. We bless you, our King. We can't wait to see you, Lord. So uh, we're, we're so uh, anticipating the next phase of, of our lives. And we thank you for it, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name, everybody said amen. amen. Let's pick up where we, where we were this morning. I won't go back into the millennium a little bit, but there's so much I didn't cover, but there's little things about the millennium. The main thing this morning was to see what our future is going to look like. There's this tendency to think we have to all compress it into the church age, and that's not true. And there's a tendency to think that we're going to worship for a thousand years, yeah. and we're not going to do that, which I'm, we'll worship tons of times, but we're going to have a very normal life. Uh, it'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be busy. It'll be, uh, the Lord knows how to fulfill your heart. And if you like to read, you'll read even better in the millennium. Amen. If you like to play the guitar, you'll play even better. So you don't, things aren't diminished. They're enhanced. Amen. Yeah. Just, just think of that. Things are just better. There's nothing worse. There is no downside to it. Because I hear people all the time, well, I, you know, I just don't want the Lord to come back because I've got so much in my heart. I'm like, you have no idea what's coming. It'll be so fun. Yeah. And extreme, extreme fun. Yeah, amen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? To where you're like, oh my God, I had no idea this would be this wild. Yeah, extreme fun. With Lucifer bound and Jesus, the head of all nations. Wow. Oh, come on. It doesn't get any better than that. It'll be, a, you'll go to different services. We'll show up in different places and the Lord will speak to us. We'll all gather different times in Jerusalem and we'll, we'll have meetings. You'll, you'll hear John Wesley preach. You'll hear Kenneth Hagin preach. You'll hear Wigglesworth. There'll be meetings where we gather. None of this stops. It'll continue to go because the, the plan of God always goes forward. There's no backing up with God. Amen. That's why I like when I was on the road with, with Dr. Dufresne. We were around Lester Summerall some, and we were going down one of the roads in South Bend. <laughs> and it's me and uh, Dr. Dufresne and Lester Summerall and the driver pulled in like this and started backing up. And, and Lester Summerall screamed. It freaked me out. I think I'm 23 years old when I was working for him. And Lester Summerall goes, stop! What are you doing? And he goes, I don't back up for anything. He said, you make the block. I'm like, wow. We got, yeah, this is a thought pattern of not backing up, okay? We got to Lester Summerall's house. His garage door went up like this and the back of the garage door went up like that so he wouldn't have to back his car out. He goes, because I don't back up for anything. That's why you saw Dr. Dufresne act like, yeah, because Lester is like, this is the way it is. So, so we, don't, we don't draw back. Everything's going forward. Everything about your life with God gets better and better and better. There's no digression. It's only increase. Only increase. And uh, that's just the way we, we don't exhaust His goodness. We just get to see more facets of His goodness. So tonight we'll get into the changes that are coming, the rapture of the church. And with the millennium, uh, we didn't finish it off like I wanted to. But man, we, we just have wonderful, wonderful things to look forward to functioning with God. I mean, think of going around raising people up and, and having to handle things like an overseer. It's going to be so cool. And you'll have a region. I'm praying I don't have Spring Hill, Louisiana. That's where I grew up. Well, I don't want to say I'm begging God, but I'm pretty much praying as hard as I can. God, whatever you do, don't put me in my hometown, okay? <laughs> Can anything good come out of Louisiana? Not much. Not much at all. And if, if you recall the different states, every state you're going to go to is going to be nicer than Louisiana, okay? I'm just telling you, out of 50 states, it's number 50, okay? But I have this tendency to think, Lord goes, guess what, Joe? You're going to Louisiana. All right. Here we go. All right. Let's hook them up. Amen, amen, amen. The, Lord, the Lord's blessed with your faithfulness. You cheer him up with your hunger for him. That just, that, that just so means so much to him. It's, it's just cool. So let's go where we were. Go back to uh, Thessalonians. And you know, we, don't talk, we won't get into the signs today. But let's go to 1 Thessalonians and we'll get into how close we are to the rapture of the church. I'll give the exact date for Pastor Craig just so he can relax. <laughs> no. We'll see. It is way off. Wouldn't that be great? This is exactly what it is. We're raptured some other time. Now, 1 Thessalonians is really cool because uh, it's the first letter written by Paul to the churches. And you know, what was the theme of it? The coming of the Lord. We've talked about this before. He was with them for two to three weeks. And you get into 2 Thessalonians. He said, don't you remember while I was with you, I told you these things? He talked about the rapture, the Antichrist, and the second coming. So isn't that interesting? The, the two weeks he was with them, I would have thought Paul would have talked about, you know, who you are in Christ, your new creation, because that's, that's Paul's message. But he talked about the coming of the Lord to alleviate fear. Yeah, they, so the whole thing about God, he wants to take the fear out of the equation. Because yeah. it would be something to work for God and be afraid of stuff. Right. Wouldn't that be odd? It would. Well, you know, you've, you've been around people that, are, that have a, they're just dominated by fear. 
Well, work people should never be dominated by fear. Right. Yeah, sure. I'll give you a couple things. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. This is for somebody. I was in uh, Corbin, Kentucky, uh, that church I was talking about before with the lady got healed of palsy. And this is way before COVID. I can't remember what year this was, maybe seven or eight years ago. These two nurses came in in hazmat suits, yellow hazmat suits, with a woman in a hazmat suit. We're not talking masks. I'm talking plastic hazmat suits like you see in the movies. I mean, full blown. I said, what's up? They, the new nurses came in. There was a lady in the hazmat suit with them. They said, well, she has this really bad flu, but we want you to pray for her. I said, sure. But she's going to have to take her helmet off. And uh, I'm, she's going to breathe on me, and I, I'm not going to get sick, and she's going to get healed. And they're like, oh, God. The nurse is like, no, no, we can't do that. She's too contagious. I said, no, she's going to take her helmet off. She's going to breathe on me. I'm not going to get sick, and, and she's going to get healed. So they, they took her helmet off, and they backed away. And, and she stands right here, and she breathes on me, and I inhaled. That's my man. Yeah, laid hands on her and said, said you're healed. She, she gets healed. And the only problem is I've been smoking cigarettes ever since. Praise the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> That's terrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I couldn't help it. I know that caught you off guard. I'm sorry. I have not, I have not been smoking cigarettes. But, you know, there's this mentality of fear. You know, you get near, you know, you get near her. And I've got a law working in me that supersedes that flu. And so that, that's why even, even ta Paul, the Lord talking about the coming of the Lord, had Paul address this with him to alleviate fear. So there's no concern. He, just, he wants you joyful. Hard to be joyful if you're tormented. I know people that have been in the Word all their lives, Bible school graduates, and man, everywhere they're looking, think somebody's trying to get them. I'm like, what, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? I said, I got angels that have charge of me. So do you. I mean, so, well, you say, well, nothing bad's ever happened to you. I was talk, Pastor Craig and I were talking about this. I can match you hell for hell after the service. The only guy that ever did that got on his knees and wept. He goes, man, I'm so sorry. So the hell comes against you, so you back away from how good your life is. The hell's not there to teach you. The hell's to get you to where you don't have any more boldness. And you can't get results if you don't have boldness. Amen? Come on. Like special faith. I love it when special faith is in operation. At different times it's been in operation, I'd back up and go, man, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen all my life. And the Lord said, if you'd be bolder in your ordinary walk, I could use you more in special faith. I said, give me scripture and verse. Took me to Acts 3. Took me to Acts 9. Who was used? Luke? No. Mark? No. John? No. Peter? What was Peter known for? The first thing he told you to add to your faith was a lack of caution. That's right. And boy, right now, well, be cautious. Don't offend anybody. That's, right. that's, the, that's so, so you're not going to have any miracles. I like what John Osteen said. Don't worry. You won't have any miracles in your church because you don't preach it. Right. Wow. Don't you love that? So sweet. He said, don't worry. God's not going to overtake you and make this happen. Right. I don't know who this is for, but this is for somebody that yeah. you've been dominated by fear. Yeah. The devil's a liar, liar, pants on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I've never heard the devil go, man, you're doing a great job, Joe. <laughs> Every single day, he goes, I'm going to kill you today. And I just laugh. I go, well, you know how many years you've been telling me that? <laughs> what a loser. Come on. <laughs> All right, so Thessalonians, Paul's writing this so they would know they weren't during the, in the trib and the Antichrist can't be revealed. So he goes over in chapter 4 and gets really detailed about the rapture of the church. So he starts with verse 13 of chapter 4. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. So the whole thing is about being happy and hopeful. He says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So he, gets, he says this, wherefore, why is that there? Wherefore, because of this, comfort one another with these words. He says, because there's coming a change like this, which is just bizarre to even think of it. But, you know, when we talk about being the last group and that we're going to be caught up, I keep telling the Lord, you need to get your flux capacitor in operation because, you know, the Bible says he's able to subdue even all things unto himself. At one word, your body's going to be altered just like that. That's how powerful he is. He will alter your flesh just like that. You're going to go from having this body to all of a sudden have a brand new body. Just as you've borne the image of the earthy, you're going to bear the image of the heavenly. And, and just like Enoch was caught up, Elijah was caught up. The sons of the prophets came to Elisha and said, don't you know your master is going to be taken from you today? They knew the day he was going to be raptured. So you, if you could have revelation of the day in the old covenant, how much more the new? What kind of covenant do you live under? New and better. 
Is it worse? No, new and better, way better, way better. Not even, not even on the same par. <laughs> so in the old covenant, he, uh, Elisha said to him, yeah, I know it, shut up. And you know what happened, man? As he's walking along, uh, he, he's caught up, and Elisha gets to see it, the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Woo, praise God. So Enoch's caught up, Elijah's caught up, Jesus was raptured, the church will be raptured. I hear people say, well, the word rapture is not in the Bible. Well, actually it is. The Greek word there is the word harpazo, means to be taken. That same word is when Enoch was taken, Elijah was taken. That's what that word is. But really, if you want to look at it in the Latin, it's the word rapture, rapture. That's what that word is there. So I don't care what it's called. All I care is that we're going to, we're going to go from point A to point B. And the Lord wants to evacuate. Every time in, in war, even this last year, Israel's ambassadors were taken out of Turkey because they thought a war was breaking out. So they were evacuated. We're just going to be evac to heaven. And the cool part about the evacuation is as that happens, your body's completely recreated to where you have a glorified body. I mean, how amazing is this going to be that it's just better? And we, we've all talked about that before, but the whole purpose of the rapture of the church is, is technically God owes Israel seven years of Old Testament time, so he's got to take the church off the earth. We have too much authority, so he's got to take the church off the earth, and he's got to get you a new body. I mean, can you remember in Exodus 19, God said, put a fence around the mountain, lest they even get near to gaze at me and die? Not because God's mean, he's just so radiant. If they got too close to him and saw him, he'd kill him. Yeah. Let me say that, saw him, he'd kill him. Yeah. So uh, now, uh, can you imagine walking into the throne? You, know, you got cherubim, you got seraphim. I mean, you got seraphim yeah. uh, uh, that, that have two wings that cover their feet, two wings they fly with, and two wings that cover their face. They're created to be at the throne, but they still got to shield themselves from His glory. Wow. Can you imagine that? I mean, it, it's going to be kind of wild. Just like when in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians 3, I believe it was, when uh, the Bible talks about Moses going up and being in the glory of God. He'd walk out. They'd put a blanket over him, yeah. made a lampshade over his head. Yeah. How weird is that? You walk out, put a lampshade on, go back in and talk to the Lord, take it off. Because he was radiating so much, it hurt them to see him. He was radiating so much, it hurt them to see him. And the Bible said that was no glory in relation to what you have in Christ. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something, there's a warning every time you come into church, midway through the service, Pastor Craig will be preaching and he'll start glowing and you're going to need these uh, goggles. So everybody starts wearing goggles in church. You bring a visitor, what are you doing? But well, trust me, you're going to need this. <laughs> well, that, and that's bringing it into now. So, so wouldn't it be weird that we're raptured and we go up with the same body and go in and talk, talk to God? Can't even talk to him. Our eye, I mean, our eyes are shot for months. No, we're, we're going to have this retrofitted body that's not, not with flesh and blood. The flesh and bone filled with the glory of the Lord. The Bible says we're longing to be clothed upon with our new body. Amen. Longing to be clothed upon so that death would be swallowed up in life. <laughs> this mortal is going to put on immortality. Wow. Man, oh man. So, I mean, he talks about the different glory of fish, different glory of all the different kind of animals. But then he talks about, man, we shall be changed. There's a change coming that you can, you can meditate on it because all it will do is it will bring you joy. I remember I had these preachers you know, tell me, said, Joe, if you preach on the coming of the Lord, you'll just get everybody's hopes up. I went, duh, that's exactly right. I'm serious. Can you imagine saying that? It's the hope, not a hope, not a hope, the hope. Yeah, the hope that, that purifies you even as you're pure. Praise God. So this, this is coming. You know, in the 70s when I got in this, well, I got in this in 1970, it was all those movies, you know, <laughs> The Thief in the Night. Man, it scared the mess out of you. You're just like, I mean, everybody was freaked out about the rapture of the church. But the rapture is not something to be scared of. It's something to be excited about. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's, there's not one thing to fear at all. Amen. Praise God. And, you know, we talked about it before, but uh, how, how, how do we know how normal it's going to be? Look at Scripture. Remember when Jesus was raised from the dead? He's walking on the road to Emmaus. And I just love that the disciples didn't know who he was. How cool is that? Yeah. I like to play jokes on people. And you know what? This is never, not in one Smith Wigglesworth book. I was preaching over in Newcastle, England. This lady came up to me. She started talking to me about Wigglesworth. I was on the God Channel. And she said, you know, Wigglesworth used to hide behind doors and jump out and scare people. <laughs> I said, what? I said, this is a guy you never hear one thing about how silly he is. And then you come to find out he's a card. <laughs> yeah, I mean, isn't that wild? So here Jesus is walking with them, and they don't know who he is. Their eyes are holding to the fact that it's him. First thing he said to them, why are you guys so sad? So see, the Lord wants you happy. Yeah. First word out of Jesus' mouth after he's raised from the dead. Yeah. Why are you sad? Yeah. 
you should be happy. He said, well, they said, well, if you lived around here, they crucified our Lord. The Bible said he would have kept right on walking. They constrained him to stay for dinner. That's a prerequisite for revival right there. They constrained him. Look it up. It means they, 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 they talked to him like, no, 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 stay with us for dinner. And what did he do? He went through the Old Testament and showed him Christ. Amazing. Showed him himself through the Word. Wow. That it was better to get it through the Scripture than even physically seeing him. Yes. Well, he broke bread there and disappeared. And they said, man, did not our hearts burn within us the words that he spoke to us? His words are spirit and they're life. Well, they go back to their buddies. Man, we just had dinner with Jesus. He's alive. We was walking on the road. No, you're not. You're crazy. So you did not. He goes, no, 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 we ate with him. He told us, he gave us an Easter message, a lesson, and they still rebuked him. And even Thomas said, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. So I said that holding his side, holding his hands. I will not believe. Jesus walks right through the wall. Thomas, reach through your hand, thrust it into my side. Be not faithless, but believing. He said, my Lord and my God. Well, the first thing they said was, he's a spirit. So here, here's a good clue about our glorified body. He goes, no, no, I'm not, I'm not a spirit. He said, a spirit hath not flesh and bone as you see I have. So he walks through the wall, which is pretty amazing in a flesh and bone body. That's a, a whole other message. And then the first thing he asked for is, where's the meat? He goes, you got any meat? He didn't say, you got any broccoli? He didn't say, you got any kale? He, he, didn't, he, didn't, say, he didn't say, where's the salad? He said, where's the meat? Where's the meat, man? Can you imagine that? I mean, could you think about that? I'll have some kale. I don't think so. God ain't eating kale, man. Come on. Could you imagine him going, I don't eat shrubbery. Think about it. Shrubbery. I planted that stuff in front of my mom's house. It's shrubbery. It's not food. So, so I can just see Jesus then go, well, we've got kale. What? <laughs> I just got raised from the dead. You're going to feed me shrubbery? Come on. So I, he's trying to show us how normal our bodies will be. We'll have an appetite, still can go through walls, never get tired, never gain weight, and experience the presence of God probably in a way that we've never even realized it'll be so wonderful. You know, amen. Praise God. Because when that glory is in operation, I remember traveling with Dr. Refrain. <laughs> I'd be in the prayer line with him. And if I didn't think about sports, I'd fall out of the power. I had to consciously think about football or think about racquetball. If I didn't, I'd be on the floor. He goes, well, you're no good to me. You're no help to me. <laughs> and uh, I'd go back to the hotel after laying hands on, helping him while he laid hands on people. And my hands would burn. I'd put my hands on the air conditioner. The presence of God is so tangible. You go back after the service and you go back to the back room and maybe the pastor might be busy for a few minutes. You just sit there and enjoy it. You just sit in that presence. You didn't, want, you didn't want anything to make that wear off. You didn't want anything oh, yeah. to make that wear off. It's so awesome. Yeah. So you just sit there and, and Dr. Frame would go, just enjoy that. Because normally I'd have to go out and do some stuff. He goes, no, no, just wait right here and, and, and enjoy it. Awesome. If we're going to feel remotely like that, yeah. you talk about awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely amazing. The other day I was in a meeting in Tulsa at Mark Brzee's church. I can't remember what those were. What, what, oh, it was a prayer conference. And Mark walking around, he walked up to me and began to prophesy. And then he hit me in the stomach. And man, the presence of God came on me so strong. I was like a blundering idiot. I was like, I mean, I, I, I didn't know where I was. For a couple minutes, I didn't know where I was. I was looking around going, I, I'm on the floor, you know, and Colleen, my wife's right beside me. And I'm thinking, I, I, I lost consciousness of where everything is. It was so good. Wow. And see, it's, it's like we're just meant to be blessed like that. Yeah. So I'm sure our glorified body will have a, a, a tendency of that to just kick into a gear and just relax. Because, you know, not, not one person in here really knows how to relax. You know, if you go on vacation, it takes two weeks to even figure out how to start relaxing. You know what I'm saying? And then by then, you've got to go, to, to go back to work. Just starting to relax, time to go back to work. So this event called the Rapture is going to be amazing. We, we, we've all talked about it a lot and everything, but let's, let's talk about uh, qualifications. This is what I'm intrigued by watching guys on TV. They're, they'll use qualifications that have nothing to do with the church. So why don't we use some scripture from the epistles where the church is, okay? So look what he says here in chapter 4, look at verse 13. Let's look at the qualifications. He says in verse 14, If we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So he tells you right there what the qualifications are to be in Christ. Because I hear people all the time, well, if you're not looking for it, in other words, they're saying there's something in the flesh you're going to do to make you qualified. There's nothing you can do in the flesh to qualify yourself. Right. Jesus qualified you with His blood. Yes. 
He takes all the boasting out. You know, I got friends in the ministry, and, and after they start having some miracles, they start walking different. They walk just like this. They get their, get their hand in their belt. <laughs> I had a miracle last week, you know. I'm just serious. Start walking like this. I'm going, who are you? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like they had something to do with it. It's like the donkey riding in Jerusalem. The donkey's going, check it out, man. It's not the donkey. It's who's riding on the donkey. Come on. So God's so smart, he takes the boasting out of this by going, you can't do something cool enough to make you worthy. My blood made you worthy. And I was hammering that one time in this church in Texas, and this lady come up to me. She goes, how dare, dare you say if you're born again, you're going up? I said, well, I'm trying to use scripture. <laughs> you know, I don't really have anything other than that. And the Holy Spirit loves to magnify Jesus. The Holy Spirit said, ask her, whose works would she rather trust in, her works or Jesus' works? Man, my works can't cut it, but I accepted his works when I accepted him as my Savior. Amen. He finished his course with joy. Come on, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, yeah. being made so much better than the angels. Come on. He, he, he did a really good job. Yes. It's not like the Father's going, well, Lord, I, Jesus, if you'd done a few more things, I could rapture them. You know, you, you, it's going to be so powerful that Lucifer is going to argue over our bodies, just like he did with Moses. Remember the archangel yeah. uh, fighting over Moses' body? And I'm sure he said, well, he's on the earth, so he's my, in my territory. And I bet at the rapture, Lucifer's going to go, hey, wait, they're on the earth, and the earth is mine. And you're going to hear the ar archangel go, the Lord rebuke you. Yeah, wow. Next thing you know, you're going to hear a shout. And with that shout, you're going to feel this sensation go all through your body. And while you're feeling that go through your body, it will be instantly on the sides of the north, wow. the city of the great, great king. king. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, man. Sides of the north, supply company. Glory to God. We'll, we'll be right there. Hallelujah. Amen. We, 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 we have no concept of how wonderful it's going to be, but so soon we're going to be caught up. So the qualification is to be born again. All right, let's talk about timing. This is the one that Pastor Craig's really, really, really into is the time here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll go to this one little hidden reference in the Gospels about the rapture. <laughs> I love it. The Lord's like, I got to tell Pastor Craig the date. This is driving him bonkers, man. <laughs> I, I, I can just see him giving you a, like a card shows up in your home. Who is this from? It's from Jesus. He wants you to know. <laughs> but you know, the only little hidden reference in the Gospels is in John 14. Uh, Jesus goes, uh, you know, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am there you may be also. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again, receive you unto myself. And they're standing there going, whoa, 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 whoa. He asked them to marry him. That's how a guy would ask a girl to marry him. He goes, well, I'm sure they went, whoa, 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 Jesus proposed to us? What's going on here? So in the, in the Jewish tradition, a man would ask a woman to marry him. They'd be betrothed. The son would go back to the father's house. The father would have the overseeing of the honeymoon suite. The father would tell the son when the room's ready. The son couldn't do it on his own. The father would go, son, your room's ready. Go get your bride. I interviewed lady. We talked about it this morning a little bit. I interviewed lady after lady after lady in Israel. I'd go, okay, tell me. How would you know how close it was for him to come? She goes, well, word would come to us that the room's almost done. And then word would come to us that it's completely done. So I would know right then I've got about a day or two and he's coming. They didn't want to use $500 worth of perfume and then he, he's six more months. So it was about being a good steward. And every single one of them looked at me like I was crazy. Like, we've never been taught that. I, I've been in this since 1970. I've never heard a message like that. Well, come to find out, it goes back to Feast of Trumpets. When Jesus said of that day and that hour, no man knows, when they heard the word day and hour, no man knows, they knew that was Feast of Trumpets. Why? You didn't know which day the Feast of Trumpets was going to be on, the 29th. Point fifth day of the month or the 30th of the month. So the Sanhedrin would send two witnesses out and they'd go, there's the new moon. So they knew which day it was going to be on. That's how Jesus wants you to know within a day or two how close it is. Amen. You say, well, if, it, if we know it's on Feast of Trumpets, uh, we'd know when it's going to happen. No, most people don't know when Feast of Trumpets is or when it's going to happen. But you know what? Man, every single year I know when it starts in Israel. I know when it starts here. And I'm walking around the house. Lord, I love you. I'm giving him a weight <laughs> offering. <laughs> Just in case, come on. <laughs> you might as well be happy about it. Come on, amen. So you say, well, you'd say, well, then we would know when the rapture is going to be. Oh, that's exactly right, because we've been taught you can't know. How many of your how many of your weddings catch you off guard? I right, boom, I'm married. <laughs> uh, no, that didn't surprise you. You walk down, you walk down in the house. Yeah, hey, honey, honey, what, what, when, I, when we get married? No, it didn't surprise you. It's not like the Lord put, put a lady in your house. So peekaboo, you're married now. <laughs> what? No, there's so much work goes into it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. 
And you know, and this whole thing is about, Colleen. can you imagine Colleen? I'm standing there, Colleen and I are about to, get, about to get married. She's walking down the aisle and her dress is all dirty. She's been rolling in the mud. I'd be, I'd be like, what in the world's going on? And as I'm standing there, this is the moment we're going to get married. And she's walking like this. Oh my God. I'm going to marry that guy. Another one bites the dust. I, I, I'd be like, man, she's not really excited about this because the Lord wants you excited. Go to chapter 5. Let's look at this for a second. Go down to chapter 5. We talked about it this morning. It's good to see it in the Word. Look at chapter 5, verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief of the night. Well, you stop reading right there. Go, there you go. We can't have a clue. We'll keep reading. Verse 3. For when they, the world, shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them, the world, as travail upon a woman with child, they, the world, shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light. You're the children of the day. We are not the, of the night nor of darkness. And then he goes on and over and over and over again says he's not appointed you to wrath, but he's appointed you to salvation. Amen. So it's like when the Lord starts repeating himself over and over again, he knows it's going to be hard for us to grasp. So he has to repeat himself because we're like, really, is it that good? It's really that good. And so you look at timing, the flawlessness of the Lord is absolutely amazing. We, we, call, them, we call them festivals. They're not Jewish festivals, they're, they're festivals of the Lord. And watch how cool God wanted to have dress rehearsal so that we, when we would see what happened then, we'd know what the plan of God is. Remember, when did Jesus go on the cross? The feast of what? Passover. The next feast was unleavened bread. He, he was, <laughs> they would take three pieces of bread, they would take the middle piece, they would fold it, they would pierce it, and they'd break it. He said, I am the bread of life. Wow. Born in Bethlehem. You know what Bethlehem means? Home of the bread. So he goes to the cross on Passover. Perfect. Buried on unleavened bread. Perfect. Raised on first fruits, the next feast. Wow. First one born from the dead. Fifty days later, the Holy Spirit's poured out on Pentecost. Flawlessly fulfilling these dates. Okay. The next one to be fulfilled is Feast of Trumpets. It's called Feast of Gatherings. I've heard other people preach about it, but like just when the walls came down in Jericho, when, when, the, when they walked so many times they were supposed to, then it became the shout. That's what the shout was. The shout will be that we'll overcome the laws of nature instantaneously wow. in a brand new body. Wow. Beautiful. A new, new life for us. Glory to God. How cool is that going to be to have that happen to us? Isn't it going to be wonderful? Oh, man. You think, think of right now, what would you do if it was tomorrow? What would you do tonight? <laughs> I got some of that. I'll come preach to you. I like that. That's good. That's exactly right. Because we wouldn't go like this. Hey, guess what tomorrow is? <laughs> yeah. Rapture. What are you guys doing? We're in church tonight for the rapture. I'm telling you what, man. I, I don't even do cartwheels, but I'll be doing cartwheels. When I get within a few days of it, I'm going to be. <laughs> I'm going to be doing it, man. All right, so there's a lot to get out of all this. And the whole purpose is, is he wants you anticipating. Yes. That's the whole purpose. He doesn't want you to go, oh, my God, I wasn't ready for that. He wants you to have a heads up. Amen. And that's what he said. When you see these things come to pass, lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Indicating you can be downtrodden when you see all of it. He didn't say, well, it's going to be so bad. It's going to be horrible. and It's going to be tough on you. No, he said, lift up your heads. Your redemption is drawing nigh. Get your focus Get your focus where it's supposed to be. In Luke, he says, don't let the sharp edge of your expectation get dulled by shopping. You can be so busy with your life that it dulls you to spiritual things. Yes. 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 So why, why does he want you aware? That's why we're here on Saturday night. He wants you excited so that it bleeds over into everybody else that can't be here. They go, what's wrong with you? I'll tell you what's wrong with me. I'm about to see the king. Amen. That's what's wrong with me. I'm excited. I can't. We should be so happy that people tell you to break that pill in half. People should be telling you, take it down a notch. Whatever you're on, you need to take less. Amen. It should be whatever that is, man. You overdid it because you're just walking around. You're just giddy. It's like a little kid. That's why I said the kingdom of God is like a little one. All right, let's talk about something that, that I really think is crazy, too. Thought I need to get into all this before we go, so hang with me. Let's talk about what's probably the, one of the most important things about the rapture of the church is, and that's your first appointment just after the rapture. And I know you know all this, but it's good to go through it. I like what John Osteen said. You can tell when you've gotten a hold of a verse when you want to hear it over and over and over again. I've never had a cheeseburger and said, well, that was my last one. I can't have another one. No, I like cheeseburgers. I had one last night with Pastor. It was wonderful. I'll have some more. Amen. Give the devil a black eye. Come on. Amen. <laughs> 
But our next appointment just after we're caught up is the Lord's so smart, He's going to have us go to the reward seat of Christ. Now we call it the judgment seat. That's a mistranslation. It's the word B-E-M-A, Bema. What's Bema translated? Reward seat. Okay? So when we go to the reward seat, the Bible says the day will declare it. You're, what you did for the Lord will preach for you right there. He's not judging your sin. You'll never be humiliated. He was humiliated for you. But he does want to reward you. Have you ever seen an Olympian get up on the podium and go, Oh my God, they're about to give me a gold, silver, or bronze. No, they're excited. Have you, I, I, never, I, I, I mean, could you imagine an Olympian get up there, what's getting ready to happen? Uh, no, they're, they're about to pin a medal on you. Come on, wake up. What's wrong with you? That's how perverted the Lucifer's got in the church. They, Jesus is coming. He's going to kill everybody. No, he said, my reward is with me. Look how perverted that guy. To where people, I've heard it preached so many times, you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. No, it's the reward seat of Christ. So your life will preach for you. And everything that you've done with the proper motive, what that judgment is about, it is an examination. Fire is going to hit your life. And what you've done to bless the Lord is going to be uh, gold, silver, and precious stones. And what you've done to be seen of man, to be cool, or of the flesh, is wood, hay, and stubble. You don't want a bonfire at the reward seat of Christ. You, you, don't, you, you don't want the angels to go, everybody back up. This is not going to be good. God, woof, what in the world was that? Could you imagine having a fire so bad that people are like, did you see that? Wow. I think it's those guys walking like this. Boom. It's going to be, people are going to go, mm, okay. No, you you know, wood, hay, and stubble are all above the ground. It's what people see you do. You probably won't get a reward for. It's the hidden things of the heart. E even when you have the intention of being a blessing, He wants to reward you for just even the, the intent of your heart. What's gold? Gold is your devotional life. How much do you tell the Lord do you love Him? Not my name's Jimmy, I'll take all you give me, but Lord, how much I love you. Silver. What's silver? The Bible says the tongue of the just is choice silver. All right, what are the precious stones? The priest would go into the presence of God for... For the people, not for himself. He didn't do it for him, he did it for the people. So you want some gold, silver, and precious stones. This is the best part of this whole deal. You'll be adorned. Daniel says you'll be clothed with glory and honor. It's the word regal. Have you ever seen a, 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 a military man? In the old days, they would have their dress whites on at night. They were, they, they were made to have to wear their dress whites. If they got caught in khaki out in the town, they'd get, they'd get a, a, fi a penalty or a fine. So you're, this, where that word comes from is regal. You will have stripes on your arm right here that indicate that you went to church on Saturday nights. You'll have another contrasting stitch right here that shows what your vocation was. You'll have another stitch right here on your arm showing what you did for the Lord. You'll even wear some badges just like in the military right here. Like you see a purple heart. That, that military guy didn't have to go, I took one for the, for the team. No, they, you know he got shot. And he still alive. He made it through it. Yeah. God's going to or, or literally... Put your faithfulness, adorn you with it all over you. You'll wear your faithfulness. John Wesley said, give me ten men that hate sin and love God and I will change the world. <laughs> when we get to heaven, you, you'll look at John Wesley's robe, you'll go, check that out. You won't go, man, I wish I had a robe like that. No, you, 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 know, you know what I'm saying? Well, how come I don't have a robe like that? Shut up. I mean... <laughs> And when Wesley would stand out, sit out there all night waiting for people to wake up so he could preach to him. No heat, no refrigeration, no cars, a horse. Can you imagine? We, can, we complain about jet travel and their own horses doing this stuff. No heat, no refrigeration, no bathtub, no shower, and thrilled to preach Jesus to people. So the cool thing about that, that, that how you'll be adorned is, is you'll, you'll show, you're, you, it'll adorn you all over. You'll go, check that out. Just like a general in the military, he doesn't have to go out. You see those stars right there? He doesn't have to tell you he's faithful. He, he doesn't have to say a word. It preaches for him. That's why during the millennium, you want to make sure you're not wearing a Speedo bathing suit. Come on. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, aha. Didn't do anything during the church age, huh? My dad, you know, my dad cursed God, mocked God his whole life. I mean, he hated preachers. He had a stroke and got saved that night on his deathbed. And, uh, you know, uh, he, man, the money, man, I'm going to be borrowing robes and throwing them at him. Like, Dad, don't even walk out of your house until you put some of this stuff on, man. Because he, 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 he went home to be with the Lord right then. He, had, he didn't have an opportunity to do one good work. His uniform is going to be skimpy. <laughs> uh -huh. People look at him and go, hmm. 
Never did anything for the Lord, did you? No. <laughs> Think of the opportunities that you have to still do stuff for people. Every, every door you open up for someone, every time you bless somebody, you watch, he wants to reward you for it. You think, well, nobody sees. He sees everything. He didn't say he's going to critique you and judge you and analyze you. That's not how he works. He's total, total non-critiquing to the point that it's almost crazy how non-critiquing he is. All right, let's go look at something else. Grab your Bible. Let's go a little bit more. We'll, we'll go over a few more minutes and we'll dismiss. Go to uh, Daniel. Look at Daniel chapter uh, 9. If I can find it here. Daniel 9. Let's look at this for just a second and then we'll close. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. This is probably the coolest verses in the Bible. We'll get to them here for a minute, but give me about five minutes, I'll get to it. But the first part is a little complex, so that's what we'll get to just a little bit of it. Uh, Daniel 9, look at verse 1. And you've heard this before, but it's good to hear it again because it'll make things get clearer the more you hear about it. So this is going to sound boring, but it really sets the stage for how flawless the plan of God is. Daniel 9, verse 1. This is page 994 if you've got a Bible like mine. In the, in, in the first year of Darius, which was the son of, or whatever that is, which was the seed of the Medes, there's no way you can pronounce it, was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. He said, In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. He said, I set my face in the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And Daniel's just saying, okay, we're in captivity. Let's find out why. Well, he found out, you know, they were supposed to let the land rest every seven years. And they fudged and changed like they shouldn't have. And guess what? They started planning on that seventh year. How long did they do that? 490 years. So they owed the land back 70 years. So God let them go into captivity to pay the land back they owed. Man, thank God we live in the New Testament. Come on. So with that in mind, they missed it for how long? 490 years. Now watch Gabriel. Go over to verse 25. This is amazing. Verse 23. This won't take but a minute, but I want you to see this. Verse 23 of, of Daniel 9. At the beginning of thy supplication, the, this is Gabriel talking to Daniel. At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, I'm come to show you, you're greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. So he goes, okay, 70 weeks or 70 segments of seven or 490 years. Just a different way of saying it. He goes, guess what? You guys missed it for 490. God's given you guys another 490. What's it for? It's for, this is pretty cool, it's for the people, the Jews, and for the holy city of Jerusalem. For the church? No, it has nothing to do with the church. For the Jews and for Jerusalem. Okay, now hang with me. What's it for? To finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Here we go. Here's the coolest verses in the Bible right here. Verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah comes, and I'm going to add the dates up for you so you don't have to add it up because it's complex. All right, basically he said there's going to be a commandment to rebuild Jerusalem. It's going to be by King Artaxerxes. Remember, he, uh, Nehemiah was all bummed out. And he goes, what's wrong? And Nehemiah goes, well, Jerusalem's overthrown. He goes, don't worry. He goes, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a commandment. We're going to rebuild Jerusalem. Gabriel said when the commandment goes forth until Jesus comes, it's going to be 483 years. So the commandment came forth, and there's Jesus in, in, in Jerusalem. They would ask him, are you the Messiah? He wouldn't really come out and tell them. He said, go tell them what you see and what you hear. Remember, even John sent a group of guys, hey, we're about, I'm about to lose my head. Go ask him, are you, are you sure you're the one? Because they're about to kill me. Jesus even said then, go tell them what you see and what you hear. But man, there came a time he rode into Jerusalem on that donkey, and all of a sudden they put those palm branches down. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They said, oh man, don't let them do that. You're admitting you're the Messiah. He said, if they didn't do it, the rocks would cry out. Because it was exactly 483 years from when that commandment came forth. To the year. Gabriel told Daniel he's going to come after 483 years. Well, how many years did God give them? 490. Jesus came after 483. He owes them seven years of Old Covenant time. He gave them 490. He came after 483. He owes them seven years. That's the seven-year tribulation. He takes the church off the earth and repays them those seven years. What are they for? The time of Jacob's trouble, not the church's trouble. 
And that's why the church can't be here. I hear people all the time, the church has got to be here during that seven years. They've got to go through hell. Well, that's true. You've got to resurrect every generation to make them go through hell. That'd be just like me with Colleen. You know, when we got ready to get married. Now, Colleen, I love you, but for seven years, I'm going to beat the tar out of you so you'll be a better <laughs> wife. I can hear her go, hmm, we'll see how that works out for you because I ain't doing that. <laughs> Colleen, you go, well, I'm going to beat the tar out of you first. I can just hear her. She, she'd match it right up real quick. Yeah, come a little closer, Joe. Whack! Ow! <laughs> Is that stupid? How many of you, how many before you got married? Honey, I'm going to send you off to Bahamas so I can torture you before we get married. How weird is that? And you know, when Colleen and I got married, I'm, I'm stopping right now. When Colleen and I got married, when, when we got married, I had David Ellis. David Ellis sang and played the piano at my wedding with, with Wayne Stevens. So at my wedding, I had my best man. Well, Colleen was getting ready in this old house there in Tulsa. and She had all these makeup people from California that did makeup for all these movies. So they came to do Colleen's makeup. So they were doing all the ladies' makeup. So while they're doing that, I had my best man bring Colleen a gift from Tiffany's in that little blue box. You know, it makes the lady happy. So I brought her. I had my best man bring her that. In the backyard, David Ellis was playing the songs that my wife likes. So she's sitting there getting ready, hearing worship songs. Uh, while she's getting ready. If I think like that, what do you think the Lord thinks He wants to do for you? Yeah. He's got some wonderful things. There's some surprises coming. Lord, the Lord said this to me. I was, I was going back. Uh, I'd finished getting ready tonight. And he, he, said, he said, there's some unusual things coming for you. You're gonna look, you'll laugh so hard. I mean, unusual methods, unusual ways. You'll go, I never, ever would have thought I'd been doing that. It's, it's a, uh, and I, you know, I all automatically, when the Lord starts talking to me about something like that, I try to grasp what it is. It's so unusual. He said, you can't even grasp it, Joe. So I'm just, the Lord's going to tell you ahead of time. You're going to come into a season, you'll go, Lord, I never, ever dreamed I'd be doing that, 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 that. And it's all about getting harvest and getting the message out. It'll be unconventional. Uh, you know, uh, man, I can see you. Uh, I'm, I'll start being silly. I've got to be, gotta behave. <laughs> I can see you in a Spider-Man outfit. I don't know. Is that, does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, Batman? I don't know. Is that, that bear witness to something? He goes, no, it doesn't. No, the Lord just wanted me to tell you it's going to be unusual, unorthodox. That you'd go, what is this? And it's almost like God's getting ready to do some really, really unusual things. And so just get ready for it. And see, that's for pastor, but that means that will come on all of us. And that just means God's going to help you do some harvesting different than any other generation. It wouldn't surprise me at all. It's just, un I don't even know what that means, but I'm like, wow, okay, Lord. I'm in. I'm in for different. Let's do it. I mean, it'll be, it'll be scriptural, it'll be biblical, it won't be weird, but it'll be to the point where you look back on it and go, if you would have told me that, I never would have believed that. So he's just wanting to get us ready. It'll be very, very joyful. Joyful. And you know, there's a season of joy coming for you guys. Just get, I mean, you're not sad. I know you're happy all the time. I love being around you. I, I get around your pastor and I start thinking goofy automatically. <laughs> I mean, so I have to tone it down. This is me toning it down, okay? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm having to just hold that back, Joe. Uh, it, it's just going to be so much a season of joy, to giddy, to where you're just like shaking your head like, wow. Uh, heavenly surprises. I mean, w listen, if I wanted to surprise my wife the day I got married with those little things, how much more the Lord with you? He's got some wonderful things he wants to bless you with. Just get it in your brain right now because I close 841. He loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. Man, praise the Lord. Someone's jawbone is being healed right now. Yeah, I don't know, know what it is, but I, I, can see, I can see it right there. It's getting restored right now. And the other thing is your, uh, 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 you can call it whiplash. Uh, I don't even know what it is. You got some kind of damage in your neck. Could have been whiplash, could have been something else, but you're healed. Amen. Praise God. Uh, amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Lord. There was something else he told me a while ago, and I forgot what it is. It'll come right back to me. So let's, let's let, thank him for me. It'll come back. Lord, tell me that again. I don't want to miss that. Th that's so sweet of you. Lord, we love you and honor you and bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Circulation. Your circulation to your extremities has gotten messed up. Lord, thank you that they're healed. Thank you that they're healed. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Wholeness in their circulation. Thank you for that. There's a man here, you got damage in your prostate gland. You're being healed right now. Thank you, Lord, for healing that, that person right now in Jesus' name. Uh, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. What is that, Lord? What is that?
Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. That's so kind of you. You're so good, Lord. We thank you for we dismiss. We, we honor you and bless you and magnify you. Jesus, we're about to see you. How could we, how could we be sad or, or even not ready when we're about to see you, the King? Father, may it burn within us the different words that show us how close we are so that we would literally make changes in our life to fulfill your will in all of our lives. We thank you for it. We thank you for it. Praise God. We thank you for it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, this is something I even thought about. Pastor uh, was talking about this at lunch. Uh, this is what I saw, and I thought about what you said. You're, someone's knee got hyperextended, like went the other way. You watch. You're healed. Amen. Amen. It's amazing how, how cool that is. Praise God. You know, I don't do a lot of fanfare with it, but I could tell you the crazy stories. You'd go, that just did not happen. I was in uh, Iowa, Monty, and Peggy Knudsen's church. I had a word that someone can't write. Never even heard of that. After the service, this guy come walking up to me. He was bawling like a baby. I thought I, thought I said something to offend him. He goes, I don't have dyslexia, but I have this, uh, have this disease I've never written before in my life. He said, you called that out? I wrote a poem about the coming of the Lord. Never, thir almost 30 years old, never written before in his life. Wow. But you know what? I didn't go, I sense the presence of the Lord coming upon me right now to heal that one with that trouble. I mean, just because it's low key doesn't mean it can't be, can't be supernatural. Because we have a tendency. I mean, I, my mom would take me to Catherine Kuhlman meetings and I'd go, Lord, I'm not weird enough to be in the ministry. <laughs> I really did. I said, there's no possible way I could be in the ministry. Because I knew the Lord was calling me, but I thought, I, I can't do that. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 So, someone's nervous system is being healed. Your nervous system, whatever kind of damage you got in your nervous system, just take it. Amen, amen. Someone, the skin inside your mouth is being healed. I don't even know what that is. That's a cool thing. Glory to God. The skin inside your mouth. Praise God. Something got damaged. I don't know how it got damaged, but you're healed. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't talk about it, but I've had the weirdest words of knowledge. I saw a woman get poked in the eye with a fork one time. Bartlesville, Oklahoma, called it out. Her sister had poked her in the eye with a fork. Yeah, I saw a woman fly fishing at Scott Webb's church, catch the hook in her eye. I saw a man get run over by a car, called it out. He's on the front row. <laughs> I mean, just amazing words of knowledge. I was with Dr. Dufresne, had a word of knowledge. The woman went through the front windshield of her car. And Ed goes, you got something. I go, yeah, there's a lady here. You went through the front windshield of your car. She came down. She had uh, uh, scabs all over her face where she'd gone through the windshield of her car. And she got healed right there. And then I saw, in the same service, in Birmingham, Alabama, I saw a man working out in the pulpwood field. They were cutting pine trees down. This one tree was on this uh, chain cable. That tree swung around like that. And the chain broke, hit this guy on the back of the head. Oh. Called it out. The man come walking down. He goes, that's exactly right. That tree hit me just like that. And then I told the sound man, I said, hey, the Lord's healing the lenses in your eyes. He goes, my mom told me I was going to get my eyes healed today. Wow. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's thank him, then we'll, then we'll go. I'm, just, I'm saying those stories, so just think, make sure you don't miss something. Then we'll go. Lord, we love you, we love you, we love you, we love you, we bless you, we magnify you. Lord, thank you for the destiny of promise of life, what you've given this church, Lord. A season of fulfillment. A season of fulfillment. Thank you for that. We're excited about a season of, of completion and fulfillment of what you've given promise of life. We thank you for it. With great joy, we'll finish our courses. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, King. Glorify you. Magnify you. Honor you. Praise God. Someone's digestive tract's being healed. Come on, whatever's wrong with your digestion, it's fixed right now. It's done. Praise God. Thank you for that, Lord. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. Man, I sure appreciate you coming. Thank you guys for being so easy to preach to. You're so uh, wonderful how hungry you are. We'll come back tomorrow morning. I think we'll get into signs, and then we'll see what, what direction we go. If not, we'll go some other way, and then tomorrow night we'll get into more stuff. But, but uh, there's something wonderful for your church. You know, when sometimes you, you sense something we don't know how to articulate it, I believe maybe the Lord will help me tomorrow more, and maybe tomorrow night, because it's something really unusual. And I, I don't know what it is, but I know it's going to be great. Amen. And it involves the plan of God being fulfilled in all of your lives. So have a good night's rest tonight. And give Pastor Craig a big hand as he comes. Thank you, Pastor Craig. Thanks for coming tonight. Appreciate it. Oh. <laughs>
Brother Joe, you may not remember, because you, you, you travel, I mean, he's on the road 49 weeks a year, so can you imagine how many words he gives and how many people he ministers to, but on that cruise, I mean, that was the worst experience of my life, that cruise. I hated every moment of it, except the services with you. I, I just wish we had services the entire time. Anyway, uh, on that cruise, remember you came on that cruise with us? But you, you gave us a word in one of the services. You said a season of joy, it's similar, not exactly the same, but similar, and, uh, and I thought, oh, okay. Nobody's ever said that to me before, but I'll, I'll take it by faith. I don't know what that means. And, uh, and that was, what was that, 2018? When was that, that awful cruise? The cruise from hell, Lorraine, when was it? 2019. August? 2019. Yeah, well, we got, that's what I thought it was, but I thought it may have been a... So it was 2019, August, right? We came home within 10 days. God, God gave us a house that we're living in now, supernaturally. And, and, and that it had been on the market for, for a long time. Nobody wanted it and uh, nobody offered. You know, we did. And as soon as we put an offer onto it and they accepted it, there was a deluge of offers, hundreds of thousands more than us, but they were locked in to go with us. Three miracles to get us into that. But, and when that was all happening, and I was under pressure because we had a lot of, well, we had to use our faith. I mean, we had 10 days to, for God to do three miracles for us. And part of it was our action. Part of it was his supernatural power. But in that season of that 10 days when we were really just like believing God with everything we had, he reminded me, he said, my prophet spoke to you and said a season of joy is ahead. And this house is part of that season of joy. So I just want to, you know, people don't always get to, you know, those words, they, we take them seriously. Take him seriously. If you get a word like that, take it seriously. Whatever that word is, take it by faith because God's going to perform his word. And he did. You also saw those two angels standing beside me and how they would mimic. I can't tell you how many times that has, the Lord has brought that back to me when I've been in dangerous situations or t severe tests and trials. And he said, you remember those angels that Joe saw? They're with you right now. They're protecting you right now. They're helping you. Right. I can't tell you how much help that's brought me over the years. So we just, we love that teaching gift, but we love that those gifts of the spirit, that profit flow that he has. So let's put a, praise God. We can't force the Holy Ghost, but we can certainly be hungry for it. So let's be hungry for it. Praise God. I said t today while he's teaching, because he, he has a tendency to go short. I like him to go long, but he, he he's very respectful. He wants to be, you know, invited back, which He'll always be invited back. You know, Richard Roberts says, blessed are the short-winded for they will be invited back. But he can be long-winded and he'll still be invited back. But he's so respectful, he wants to honor the time. But I'm sitting there and I, in my heart, I'm saying, Lord, don't let the service end without words, without words of knowledge. Where the people need the flow of the Holy Ghost, not just the teaching flow. And look at how the Lord just touched him to do that. Isn't that wonderful? So we're looking forward to whatever that thing is. The Holy Ghost is stirring something in his spirit about our church and we want to we want all of what whatever that is we father whatever that is we want all of it our hearts are open to be corrected our hearts are open to be tweaked whatever you want to do holy ghost to be encouraged but we thank you that lord you promised me i'm holding you father to your word you said to me this is your bethel year and in bethel i spoke I spoke to Abraham, I spoke to Jacob. Father, this is our Bethel year. That's just the thing for our individual church privately in the microcosm that you've said to me and you said, one of the ways I'm gonna speak is bring in the guest ministers. I will speak through the offices that stand here more than usual, more than normal. So Father, I'm putting a demand on you for that prophet's office that he stands in, that Father, whatever he needs to say, whether it's corrective, whether it's encouraging, whatever, that Holy Ghost, you would have him say to encourage our church, to correct our church, to help us get into the plan of God and fulfill it, because that's all that matters is fulfilling the plan of God. Lord, we will receive it and we put a demand it. We thank you that you'll speak through him. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. I don't normally say that, but God spoke to us and said this year there's going to be ministers that come. I'm going to speak to your church through them. Lord, so based on that instruction, Lord, I'm putting a, I'm putting a draw on that. I'm putting a demand on that. And I thank you, Father, that, that, we, don't, that we don't always have prophets come, but my God, when we do, we reverence that office. Praise God, we reverence that office. Amen. Tony Jones would tell me, Tony Jones Jr., he's Pastor Nancy's worship guy. And he would tell me, he said, he said, Pastor Craig, you know, when we would, you know, he traveled with Dad Hagen for years before, and then when he passed on, then he moved on. And, but he said, you know, when, when, when we would, when we would, Dad Hagen would be there and, and he'd be resting in the afternoon 
and there'd be a service in the evening. He was part of Raymond Singers and Band, and he said, you know, we'd set up all the stuff, you know, for the music and practice, and he said, then we'd go to a room and we'd start to pray. He said, most people didn't realize that we did that. They thought we just did singing. But he said, we started to intercede and pray. And he said, so many times the Holy Ghost would come on us in the prayer time before the service started and said, don't just pray for the teaching office. Don't just pray for the teaching flow. There is a higher flow. And that is the prophet's office. Pray for the, and they would intercede and groan and pray cry out to God for the prophet's office to come forth. And Dad Hagen would be teaching and he'd just step right in and go, I don't know. And he'd just step right into that prophet's flow. And the whole atmosphere would change. The whole service would change. We love teaching, but we want the highest, the highest of the highest. Amen. And that is the move of the Holy Ghost, not just the teaching. But see, Brother Joe has such a wonderful flow of both. He has that teaching anointing and also that other anointing. Praise God. So we're going to have more tomorrow. Amen. Let's bless the man of God tonight. Ushers, help us, please. Put your hands up if you need an offering envelope. You should have one in the seat pocket. Many of you prepare it before you come. Of course, we, you can also give on, uh, you can give online, as you know, if you'd prefer to do that. If you're giving just regular tax receipted gifts, like normal, then just make it out to promise of life. And you don't need to, you don't need to just, uh, just your name on the envelope, you don't, or your number on the envelope. Don't, please don't put anything else on the envelope, just your name or your number. And that's made out to promise of life. That will go to his ministry. Of course, the Lord dealt with us, Joe. I don't, I don't know if, I don't think it's been since you've come. I think it was during COVID or maybe, I don't know, sometime around then the Lord started dealing with me and he said, I don't just want you to bless the ministry. I want you to bless the man. And so what we've started to do is not just take offerings for the ministry, but people that want to bless the person personally with cash only. It can't go through the church bank account because that's illegal, but cash only. It's a non-tax receipted gift. You're not going to get a tax receipt for this at the end of the year. And we're just facilitating as a church to say we're just the gathering. We're just the gatherers of that. And if that's the case, then just put personal on your envelope and it can be cash only. We're going to give, we're going to get all that put into U.S. funds and we're going to give them a stack at the end of it, a check for his ministry and some cash personally because we love him. We don't just love his ministry, we love him. So Father, bless the givers right now. Thank you for a generous congregation. Lord, I know they're a bit out of practice because we haven't had a guest minister for quite a long time because COVID has really, thank God for Brother Randy Greer, he kept us afloat. But Lord, he's been the only one in three years that's come to our church. And so Lord, I thank you that they're, they're not out of practice, that they're generous tonight and that they're giving according to as they purposed in their heart by the leading of the Spirit. They're giving, Lord, to him personally as well as to his ministry. And we thank you, Father. We're being fed, and your word says that he's worthy of double honor, those that teach in the word and doctrine, and he has been teaching in the word and doctrine. So he is worthy of double, Father. So we thank you that we bless him now. We bless him tomorrow. We bless him tomorrow night. I thank you that he leaves with a generous offering in Jesus' name as, an, as, a, as, a, as a sign from us to him that he's loved and that his voice is received and appreciated. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' precious name, bless every giver now and everyone said amen and amen you can pass those buckets amen hallelujah is jesus coming 2026 is he coming 2034 this is the question of the night none of us know the answer but he's coming that's all we care about is that he's coming amen praise god praise the lord is it which you didn't tell clarify brother this was about the rapture tonight but you didn't give a date so anyway, praise the lord isn't it wonderful Hallelujah. It's just wonderful to be around at a time like this. We're like Esther for such a time as this. Amen. Every life is so important to God. Every soul you can win to Jesus, they escape, they escape hell. We should be motivated to do that more. Amen. Praise God. We bu buckets passed. The cafe is open. Take your time leaving. You don't need to rush out. We'll see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning for normal service. We love you. Have a good night. Don't forget 7.30 again tomorrow evening. You're blessed. Be blessed.